Well, to discuss the 9-11 anniversary further, we're joined by Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley. He is author and historian joining us via satellite uh, from New York. Dr. Tarpley, welcome to the program. Well, 10 years on uh, and so much speculation still exists surrounding that day. Why haven't uh, the U.S. Uh, and, and the intelligence officials addressed these matters in a more comprehensive manner? It seems that they just want grass to grow over it, don't they? Well, the, the fact is that the United States government uh, cannot tell the truth, cannot really come clean on this because of, of what actually happened. Uh, in very crude terms, 9-11 represents a war provocation spawned within the bowels of the U.S. intelligence community by a group which we can call the rogue network or invisible government. Uh, it was done through a very large concentration of drills, about 25 or more, that were being held on that morning. Every aspect of 9-11 uh, corresponds to a drill and indeed was produced through a drill. The purpose of all this was the desire by Wall Street uh, aggressive circles, I guess we could say, to start the war of civilizations, to start the war that immediately began with an ultimatum to Pakistan, uh, an invasion of Afghanistan, then expanded later on to a war with Iraq, uh, and still the aggression against Libya and other countries from Yemen to Somalia and all over the world, all conducted under the aegis of this absurd, really fantastic 9-11 myth. There has never been any proof. Uh, Colin Powell, when he was Secretary of State, promised a white paper within about a month. It was never delivered. Instead, we had the Kane hamilton Commission, which is really a tissue of lies and perjury. And don't take my word for it, Kane and Hamilton themselves have said so. They, uh, in a book published uh, five years after, their, uh, after the event, they admitted that top officers of the United States Air Force had committed massive perjury in front of the official 9-11 Commission. That's a federal crime, but they decided to do nothing about it. So we're left with simply a bald assertion by the U.S. government that these things are so. The official version is impossible. And Barty, I would say that, that means that uh, we're in the presence of a big lie. Well, having said that, uh, in your views, who's to blame for all the deaths that day? Who do you point the finger at? Well, look at the point where Wall Street financial interests intersect with the uh, intelligence community. Uh, that's the rogue network. Uh, that is an entity which has been around since the 1890s. It didn't start with Bush and Cheney. They have their own foreign policy, their own domestic policy, and they intend to, to force these things through. My book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, has now reached its fifth edition. I'm up to a total count of 46 drills, exercises, war games, and other activities, be it of the Pentagon, the intelligence community, and so forth. And again, everything that you see on 9-11 comes out of one of these drills. Since this is so, there can be absolutely no doubt that it is uh, an inside job, or more precisely, my hop made it happen on purpose, and the people making it happen on purpose are the U.S. intelligence community, this, this rogue network, uh, sometimes also called the special forces underground, or the deep state, the parallel government. It has any number of names, but them. Uh, it is not the work of a group of 19 fanatic psychotic patsies that were assembled. Uh, some of those people probably thought that they were actors in a drill. I think Mohammed Atta, to the extent that he was there at all, thought he was an actor in a drill and so forth. Uh, and the effects that you see were created using massive resources. Could not have been done by these marginal individuals that the FBI then produced within 48 hours. And uh, Dr. Tarpley, how does the American public cope with the issue of 9-11, the way it was carried out, how it wasn't prevented, and most of all, uh, its aftermath, the wars in the region, the deaths of uh, all the soldiers, and also, let's not forget, all the taxpayer money that has gone and will never return. It, it has caused millions of deaths, I mean, primarily in Iraq, but also in Afghanistan and many, many other points in the world. Back under Bush and Cheney, every action of the U.S. government was explicitly predicated on 9-11. And that made it extremely controversial. And uh, people who didn't want to go along with Bush and Cheney were very skeptical. So in those days, we got up to about one-third 
or slightly more of the American people who emphatically did not believe the official version felt there was a cover-up and felt that there was government complicity in some form. Uh, that has declined somewhat because also because of the decline of the 9-11 truth movement, but there's still plenty of skepticism. Now, this weekend, we're under a new alert. This has been dusted off and trotted out again, and I think it's actually plausible. I think there is now elevated danger, uh, not of an attack by al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is working for the United States in Libya every day. They're, they've taken over Tripoli. The military governor of, of Tripoli is Belhaj. He's an al-Qaeda operative but rather a false flag event which might motivate, for example, an attack on Syria or something like domestic martial law. We've got a banking crisis in Europe. We'll soon have a banking panic here in the United States. Uh, Bankers may come forward and demand new bailouts. There will certainly be demonstrations against bankers starting this fall. Uh, It's very convenient for those Wall Street circles to say we're going to shut down domestic protests under the cover story that it's Middle East terrorism, whereas really what they're trying to do is impose austerity and bailouts on the American people. From New York, uh, author and historian Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, many thanks. It's always a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us here on Press TV.